But you want to have fun with my God. I owe him my very existence. If it hadn't been for him, I wouldn't be here today. I know that for a fact. So I'm going to take every opportunity I can to make They made their living off of studying the Word of God. And they still don't know how to get rid of it. The blind and lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, 
and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sure displeased. And said unto him, do you hear what they're saying? And Jesus said unto them, and sufferings, thou hast perfected their work. Jesus said, I hear them. I hear them. And out of the mouth of babes and sufferings, thou hast perfected praise. That's what I want to preach to you for a few minutes tonight on perfected praise. Perfected praise. If there's anybody that feels like they have perfected it, and there better be everybody in the building, let's just praise the Lord for a few minutes right now before we're seated. Come on, praise him like only you can. Don't look around at your neighbor. Don't don't listen to what they're saying. Let's praise him. Lord, I love you. I praise you with everything that's within me. I rejoice in you. I praise you for every miracle, every blessing, every touch, every great service. I praise you for the Holy Ghost. I praise you for the name of Jesus. I praise you for my family, for my friends. I praise you for my home. I praise you, God, because you healed me. You delivered me. You've forgiven me of all of my sins. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. Lord, I lift you up. I adore you. I magnify you. I exalt you. You are great and great and to be great. You are great and great and to be great. Perfected praise. In my estimation and also in the estimation of many others, the greatest dis- demonstration of praise comes from the Old Testament. From the men such as David and Asaph, Ezra and Solomon among others, who were great at writing down for our benefit words of praise that paint a picture of a God that is like no other. I'm referring to the book of Psalms, 150 different chapters uh, full of praise and adoration and glorifying the one true God from men and from women uh, who knew him intimately, who had felt his touch, uh, who had felt his power, who had experienced his blessings, uh, who had sinned and been forgiven. Uh, They had a unique way of demonstrating praise. Psalm 103, 1 and 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Ancient Israel had a wonderful custom of incorporating personal testimonies in the public worship. When you hear of the psalmist declare, sing unto the Lord a new song, it was a testimony of what God had done for them either that day or some day prior, Brother David. It was a testimony that they just created a song and began to declare how good the Lord was to them. feeling of, of appreciation washes over me when I'm driving down the road or, or when I'm looking at my children or I'm looking at my beautiful wife. But when I think of, of how good the Lord has been to me, I have made up my mind that I'm going to praise him. Oh, I'm going to praise him right then. I don't care who's looking. I'm going to say thank you, Jesus. Sometimes, Brother McKinney, I'm going to weep 
Sometimes I'm going to clap. Sometimes I'm going to feel the spirit. But I, I may fail at a lot of things. I may mess up in a lot of areas. I may fall short in a lot of ways. But I've made up my mind that I'm going to praise him with everything that's within. Him. I'm going to praise Him. I'm going to declare Him. I'm going to speak of His goodness and of His mercy and of His blessings to me. Here in the 103rd Psalm, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. I feel the presence of the Lord in here. If some of us would, would start going back in our minds, uh, and if you have to turn me off for a few minutes, that's all right. Uh, but start going back in your minds uh, to a night when you felt hopeless, uh, when you had nothing left, uh, when it looked like there was nowhere to go, uh, and you were on rock bottom, uh, and the presence of the Lord reached down uh, and put his hand on you. Uh, somebody came along uh, and patted you on the back in the Holy Ghost, uh, when the Lord made his presence known to you, uh, and you realized everything's going to be all right. If we would remember that and manifest that feeling in praise to him, I wouldn't be able to preach in this place. I ain't forgot. Oh, God, help me. I hadn't forgot what it felt like to be hopeless and have the Lord come down and touch me. I haven't forgotten where I could have been. Oh, God, help me. I haven't forgotten where I could have been if it hadn't been for the mercy of the Lord God. I've got no choice but to praise him. I want him to know that I remember. Let me tell you something. You can be broke as a joke. You can be sick in your body. You can be flat on your back in a hospital bed. You can have everything going wrong in your life, but you still got to praise for the Lord. somebody getting an experience with God that's going to be with them for the rest of their life. I don't want to go home tonight without a new praise being birthed in somebody's spirit where they declare, oh, you should have been there when the Lord blessed me. I wish you could have felt it when the Lord delivered me. You don't know like I know what he's done for me. You don't know like I know. You didn't feel that redemption like I felt it. You didn't feel that freedom. Oh, you didn't hear the chains fall off of me. You didn't no, you don't know what it was like. Oh, Jesus said it plainly. The one that praises him the most is the one that's been forgiven the most. I feel like that there's nobody on planet Earth that's been shown more mercy than me. I owe him everything. I owe him everything that's within me. That's without me. All I have, I owe to him. It's leaping. You better believe I'm going to leap. And when you get as fat as I am, you know you look like a fool trying to jump. But I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him. his crown and his, his kingly robes and yet on a linen he thought and the Bible said he danced before the Lord with all his might. And his wife his wife watched at him out the window and hated him for it. I don't feel like for one second she hated him because he did it. She hated him because of his ability to just let go and do it. And when he come in the house, she said, I guess you ought to be real proud of yourself. The king of Israel danced around naked in front of all them ladies. She said, 
then let me tell you something. Just listen. If you think that was bad, I'm going to be more vile. I'm going to be more nasty. I'm going to be more, more debased than what you see. That was only the beginning. The presence of the Lord is back home. The Ark of the Covenant is back home. And that not can crowd go. My crown don't mean nothing. My ropes don't mean nothing without the presence of the Lord. My thoughts don't mean nothing. My reputation don't mean nothing without the presence of the Lord. I've got to have his presence, and I'm guaranteed to find his presence when I lift up praise, when I begin to praise him. The Bible said he inhabits the praises of his people. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord at all times. His praise his, shall be continually in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Oh, oh magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Praise him. Praise him. When all else fails, praise him. When you don't feel nothing, praise him. When you got black eyes, swelled up, broken nose, no teeth left in your mouth, uh, been kicked out, uh, beat down, uh, mistreated, and degraded, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Let me tell you something. He didn't bring us this far to leave us. He didn't bring you this far to turn you loose. He didn't bring you. He didn't bring you this far to leave you. I heard something the other day. The children of Israel never had to fight one battle by themselves till after they left Kadesh Barnea. Till after they wouldn't believe. They never had to fight one battle by themselves. Matter of fact, all they had to do was rejoice. They had absolutely nothing to do other than Moses stretching out his staff and the hand of God rolled back the Red Sea. Let me tell you something. If we'd stop fighting and start praising, we'd see what the Lord wanted us to do, wanted to have happen in our life. We would see the Lord declared in our life. We don't have to fight a battle that's not ours. The battle's not yours. He told Jehoshaphat, you don't have to fight this battle. But Jehoshaphat got with the people and they said, we don't know how to fight. We don't have to fight. But he didn't say nothing about not praising him. Put the praisers out in front. Put the singers out in front. And we're going to praise the Lord and win the victory. We're going to win the victory. I'm going to praise him. Turn to your neighbor and say, I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Oh, I left church this morning. I left church this morning. I felt the battle we were fighting. I felt the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and I left church this morning and, and said in my spirit, I refuse, I refuse to settle for just saying we made it through another service. I refuse to just have normal church. I refuse uh, to just be like, I saw other people leaving churches. Uh, I've been to other kind of churches uh, where the power of God doesn't move. Uh, I refuse uh, to just have a gathering. I refuse to just be a social center. I refuse to just fill up somebody's Sunday time. We know the living God. He is within us, uh, and we praise him. Uh, we don't praise him out of peer pressure. We don't praise him out of obligation. We praise him because we know him.
just clap my hands out of fear of pressure. I don't just stand to my feet because I don't want somebody else to feel bad. But I do it because when they start singing about it, I wish somebody would grasp a hold of what I'm trying to say tonight. I, I don't have any great theological uh, 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 words to bring to you. No enticing words of man. Bless them. All I got to bring to you is I come to praise the Lord. I come to say thank you, Jesus. I come to say I love you, Jesus. I come to say hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hosanna. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest. going to be some nights and we've got a great great group of musicians uh, and a great group of singers uh, and, and we've got some good ministers uh, but brother David there's going to be nights that we're off there's going to be nights that the singing ain't just flowing like it always does there's going to be nights where we sing songs uh, that don't just fit right in but there can never be a night uh, not one service not Sunday morning Sunday night Monday night Wednesday night or Tuesday brother brother if brother Mark has his way seven days a week uh, that we come into the house of the Lord there cannot one time. We can't have a praise slump. We cannot have a praise slump. We can never have a time when the praises don't go up. We might have a slump in a lot of ways. We might have a runny nose. We might have a chest cold. But we can never have a time when we don't praise the Lord. I said, well, now you can't expect to have blowout church all the time. Somebody tell me why. <laughs> Brother Billy, I kind of got used to people getting the Holy Ghost. We've done gone too long. How long has it been, Brother Jesse? How many? That's too long. Oh, Sister Ireland got it. How long? Two weeks ago? One week ago, it's still too long. They have never felt what it's like to be nasty and dirty and ugly. Your mind and your spirit racked with guilt and, and to fall on your face before a merciful God and lift up your hands and say, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> Lord, forgive me and feel all of the, oh, the blood of Calvary wash over you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet and every sin you've ever committed is gone. Never felt the forgiving power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, there ain't enough devils in hell that ought to be able to stop you from praising. There's not enough arthritis, bursitis, uh, enough of cold, enough of pneumonia, enough flu, uh, enough of anything to stop you from praising the Lord if you felt one drop of His precious blood. Together out loud because we in the Bible we read in Acts 4 and 24, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord. We lift our hands in praise because in the Bible we read, lift up your hands in 
the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Psalm 134 and 2. We sing with all of our hearts because in the Bible we read, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Psalm 98 and 4. We play musical instruments uh, as instruments of praise to him because in the Bible we read, and all the house of Israel played before the Lord uh, on all manner of instruments, 2 Samuel 6 and 5. We clap and shout unto God because in the Bible we read, oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph, Psalm 47 and 1. We dance before the Lord because in the Bible we read, praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the strength instruments and organs, uh, Psalm 150 and 4. We testify in public uh, because in the Bible we read, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee, Psalm 22 to 22. We anoint with oil for divine healing because we read in the Bible, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, James 5 and 14. We allow the operation of the Spirit spiritual gifts, because in the Bible we read, when you come together, every one of you have the psalm, have the doctrine, have the tongue, have the revelation, have an interpretation, 1 Corinthians 14, 26, we do everything we do because the book says to. Okay, let me tell you something, I'm about to close, I need to grab into my sermon. Not at the point we need to close the cash out. <laughs> Boy, if you're just going in to let God be God, you go to your darkest place right now. You know something, Brother Terry? When you got the Holy Ghost, I'm talking about you being all of us, not just you. I'm just telling you what I do like that for Brother Terry. If you got the Holy Ghost burning inside of you, we ought to have to calm people down to go on with the church. Brother Pete, I'm on my way to church. I'm on my way to trumpet sounds tonight, I plan on going. I got the Holy Ghost. I've been baptized in the only saving name of Jesus Christ. And my sins have been forgiven. three arenas. I'm going to finish real quickly. There are three arenas of praise that this writer speaks of. There's personal praise, communal praise, which is community praise, and then universal praise. There are five verses which deal with praise for personal experience. He says, this is the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Who forgiveth all who healeth all thy diseases. If I got healed, he's in it. If I don't get healed, he's going to it. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. I don't mean to, I don't mean to embarrass you, and I don't think it's possible, but if I was that way, you all thought about you. I've heard her testify of the things that she did, the things that, just generally speaking. But he redeemed you. The devil wanted to kill you. The devil wanted to destroy you. But the Lord redeems your life from destruction. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness? Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things? 
The next 13 verses, we're not going to get to them, Brother Shannon. But tomorrow's Veterans Day. If you know a veteran, if you see a veteran, just like you might know a veteran, shake their hand or thank them. I don't care if you agree with war or not. I don't agree with it either. I wish we didn't ever have war. But unfortunately, they're a necessity. So tell them you appreciate what they've done. The next 13 verses deal with praise for the way that God has looked out for Israel. How he didn't hold a grudge. Brother Kenny, they did him so wrong. Israel did him so dirty. He would deliver them. As soon as he delivered them, as soon as everything smoothed out, Brother David, they go back and worship an idol. Over and over and over and over and over. But every time they turned back to him, he forgave them. He didn't hold a grudge, nor did he forget them in time of trouble. I know there are many, and I don't want to kill the service. I don't. But I know that there are many. There are many. That, that things look so bleak in our country. I know that our country is in a state of apostasy, a state of falling away, of leaving the principles upon which we were built. I don't care what anybody says. We were built upon biblical principles. I don't care why anybody tries to, 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 to sway it in a different direction or say anything about George Washington, Thomas Jefferson. It wasn't about them. It was about God Almighty establishing this country upon biblical principles. I know that the questions are many, and it appears there is no answer in sight. However, there is still much to praise God for in this country in which we live. It is necessary that we recognize, it is necessary that we recognize in the face of those that refuse to acknowledge this fact that we are only here by the grace of God. This country has felt the favor of God Almighty. We have reaped the benefits of men and women who shed their blood in the dirt of land so far from their home. And we are still blessed beyond measure when compared to the rest of the world. We must never allow the naysayers or the negative media of today to drown out our praise to the living God for what he has done and how he has blessed the country in which we live. We must forever, no matter how bad it gets, we must forever let God bless America be our song and take full advantage of the freedom we enjoy while we still have it. And thirdly, you come to the music. Thirdly, the writer speaks of universal praise. During worship, Israel often celebrated the far-reaching power and authority of God over everything. This is the theme of this final discourse of praise. That the praises of God can only be adequately reflected in the songs of angelic hosts and heavenly beings. Will not the little voice of one believer be drowned out in the anthem of this universal chorale? The stars serve in his pleasure. The sun and the moon were lit by his word reflecting Brother Billy his majesty. The angels assemble the heavenly choir to announce his birth and their accompaniment is spoken of in John's revelation. How can the praise of one human being, one human being, a voice that can be easily lost in the majestic swelling of the praises of heaven and earth. We can rest assured of the importance of our place. We can rest assured of the importance of our place in the directory of those that praise him. Because we're the only ones that stand. The trees lift their branches. 
the stars, the sun, and the moon shine in his presence. The wind, the wind is what he used as evidence or a comparison of the Holy Ghost. And it blows in his presence. And Brother Pete, we are the only created being that we taste him because we know him. because we know him. The heavens declare his glory. The earth Brother Peter, it has no source. As he, the expert, uses astronomy for 30 years, they acquiesce and bow down. But they were one that you and I will only know that our praises, what you translated, are better than that. If you don't clap your hands, 